Hey guys, I'm Jason Live. I'm going to be showing you how I made a solar water heater today. And this video is uh, really inspired, and this actually this work is inspired by a guy called Dan Rojas, whose video is also on YouTube. He made an excellent video about how to make a, um, a solar trough reflector and water heater using 6-inch diameter pipe, which has been cut down the middle, as I've done here. Dan, in his video, used 1-inch pipe, and I've chosen to use 3 quarter inch pipe, which I'm hoping will make this a little bit more efficient. The reason that I chose that is because um, is uh, there's actually two reasons. The first one is that the extra quarter of an inch along this trough adds up to around but somewhere between 12 and 15 square inches of extra solar collection surface area. The second reason is, and this is probably more important, is because of the shape of the collecting element. So as you can see here, I've taken a 10-foot copper pipe, I've cut it in half with a pipe cutter, and I've actually used street, uh, street connectors and, uh, uh, and elbow connectors and soldered them together in this configuration so that the water comes up one side and down the other. Um, however, the two the important piece is that the two uh, two sections of three-quarter inch pipe are on top of each other, making the element not a circular element, but an oblong element. And here's why. So this is actually intended once, of course, this has to be mirrored. When this is sitting in the bottom of the trough, the sun's rays are going to come in from, you know, different directions. So here's east and west, and this will be pointing south at about 45 degrees. Even so, the sun makes an arc in the sky. Right now it's late afternoon in Atlanta, and so the sun is, is fairly low in the sky. And as those rays, they come in, they're reflected to various points in the trough, you know, from various angles up here. Well, it turns out that there's actually a plane uh, which is uh, at a at at a normal to the uh, to the cross section of this semicircle that that has that is most likely to collect the solar radiation from you know these different angles. So that's the idea of this shape of element. Um, it, it you know I'm hoping it's going to be more efficient than just a simple simple tube. Okay, so there's the, some of the science. We're actually going to be measuring the, the power output of this once we get it up and running. I've connected, I've, I've soldered on um, adapters so that I can put a hose nipple in here and a valve on here. We're going to be mirroring this, like just, just like how Dan mirrored his pipe. And then we're going to be using these edge connectors. And what I've done here is taken, taken the end cap and cut it in half with a miter saw. We'll drill two holes here and here so that this element sits in there like that, upright, and these poke through. So let's mark this up. We've got to take into account the thickness of the pipe, so we'll pop this on here, and we'll uh, use a pencil just show where the pipe is, you can see that it's not quite to the edge. And then we need to... So here you are. And a tip, like a, a tip is, is, is actually you had to use an inch and a quarter because of the fittings that I'd soldered on. And so basically I overlapped this. And we'll have to pad this when we put the uh, element in. So here it is. This is the Mark 1. And uh, I've uh, put the mirrored reflective backing inside the pipe. And this is uh, an acrylic sheet with a curtain I've, I've just screwed in place so that you no know, leaves and debris get in there. And you'll see here I've got a hose pipe connected with a hose clamp and um, I actually have a valve here. At the bottom of this pail there's a, a pump which is connected to the hose piping which uh, then takes the water to the solar reflecting trough, the concentrating trough, and back again into the same container. And we've got six gallons of water in here. So let's start measuring the temperatures. 
Okay. So the water going into the system is currently at 20.3 Celsius. Let's just move the probe and see what the water coming out is. Oh, whoops, oh, that's the end of the... Oh dear, oh, that's the end of that. Well, because we dropped our temperature probe, uh, I'm not going to be able to show you um, how it's heating in real time. It's, it's not a huge difference between the inlet and the outlet temperature. At uh, 2.43 today, I did measure the temperature and it was at 14.8 uh, Celsius. So from that, we can actually calculate the, the, the power, the power, the effective power output of this system. So here are the results. Before I, these were measured before I dropped my thermometer into the pail of water and ruined it. Over the course of 55 minutes, the temperature changed by 6.6 .6 degrees C. That's 55 minutes is 3,300 seconds. Now we can make some assumptions here, uh, which, uh, which I can go through as I go through the calculation. That is, the pump basically doesn't contribute any heat. There's no heat loss. It was about a 50% cloud cover. And uh, we use 6 US gallons, that's 22.7 kilograms of water. If we want to calculate the power of the system, power is equal to energy uh, given off uh, over time. So the, to calculate the energy, we're going to assume, this is, uh, here is the, f is the specific heat capacity of water. Let's assume that our system has the same specific heat capacity as water. So that's 4.2 joules per Kelvin per gram. This is the temperature change, 6.6 .6 Kelvin or 6.6 .6 degrees C. And here's the amount of water, 22,700 grams or 22.7 kilograms. This is how many joules that makes. We know, the, we know the time, so if we divide the energy over the time, we get 191 watts. Okay, so that's the measured wattage, that's the experimental wattage. Now, I am estimating it was around a 50% cloud cover day, and that was back in April. And so we might expect in full sun that, um, that we'd get close to 400 watts out of that five foot long system, which I'm actually pleased with.